Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 was one of the best coolers in the world, if not the best. Now, this is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 420 millimeter cooler, and we're gonna see how good this is. And you're probably gonna like it. Let's go. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out Hookies through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get 25% off. Use your preferred payment method, including PayPal or bank card. Go to your orders and copy the key. Paste the license to the activation settings, and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. Or you can buy Windows 11 Pro key instead. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get 25% off. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. So this is the 420 millimeter ARGB model. And what you get in the box is the rad, obviously the pump, the pump head, which is very interesting. We'll look at that in a moment. Mounting accessories. The fans are actually already mounted onto the radiator. And I'm gonna put this closer to you, but actually what I have in the back here is the older version. So this is the liquid freezer two. And one of the things that you can see is that the fans look exactly the same. So they haven't actually upgraded the fans. There is still the same 140 millimeter fans. The one thing that we can see that is different is the radiator. You can see that the ma material of the radiator, this is kind of like a metal feel and where this is very, very smooth and matte. This is more shiny. The new one is more shiny. And if we're looking at the radiators this side, these look very, very similar to me as well. Perhaps the fins are a little bit more tense on the older one and less tense fins on the newer one. And if you're looking at the rads on the top, they are 38 millimeters both thick. So the thickness of the radiators hasn't actually changed. They probably just use slightly different material or different coating material for these radiators. Now, what has changed is the pump block. And if you're looking at these tubes here, these tubes seem so much more flexible as well as the older ones. The old ones, we had this kind of a tubing that was uh, gray and with lines on the top. Now we have black tubing and the tubes feel much more flexible. The tubes can't twist from the radiator on the edge there. So this is still the same, but they're a little bit more flexible in terms of like how they are coming out. The old ones, we have these long metal kind of ends or fixings here that kind of prevent the tubes from flexing. Also, the pump head is a little bit different. So if we're looking at the area, you can see that the new area, the surface area is bigger than the older one. A few millimeters, maybe even five millimeters bigger on one side. I really didn't like the old version pump head head that looked like kind of like a very Batman-y look. A lot of different shapes. I don't like it as much now. The newer one will have a pump head just like that which is a lot more minimal and much nicer, looks much nicer to me. Now, the tubes do bend a little bit on the actual pump head. The old version had it absolutely straight in here. There was no bending of these, that's how they went in. But now the new ones, you do have a little bit of tube orientation adjustment. There is actually a fan underneath this pump head. You can see these are the magnets and these are the connectors or connection points in there and there's a magnetic connection that kind of connects over there and you can see there's a fan underneath here that will give you some cooling for your vrms on the motherboard so we're gonna see exactly how this works but that doesn't tell the whole story of what's different in this cooler because the way you install this cooler and mount it to your socket is the most different I have ever seen. So what I have here is the Asus Z790 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard where we do all of our testing. I've put the 14900K in there just so we can, you know, really stretch it to its maximum there. But the way you mount this cooler is inside you've got some um, screws and um, other mounts, I think AM5 mounting kits in there. But if you're mounting your cooler to the LGA1700, so that's 12, 13th or 14th gen, perhaps even 15th gen, then you're gonna get something like this. So basically, Arctic includes a contact frame with the cooler. So now you don't have to have an extra contact frame. How this works is, you're gonna get this tool in here, and 
you see this little arrow in there so that's well that's gonna go on the bottom there so we'll just take this contact frame off i'm holding the back frame on the back of the motherboard because there's it would fall off right now so all you have to do is put this back in here now what's different about this is that if you try to use these silver screws that came with the motherboard, the original screws don't fit this contact frame. You're gonna have to use these special screws in there. And now it's a Phillips head that we need, right? And make sure you tighten this in a star pattern, kind of gently going around so that your CPU is not falling out from one side or the other side or getting pressure too much on one side or the other side. Okay, and I've kind of reached the hard stop now and I can't go any further. So these screws are very, very tight. And this frame now is absolutely solid in there. Now the CPU change is a little bit more complicated. And if you do a lot of uh, CPU changes, then it takes a little bit longer time, but your CPU will have better contact with this. When you look at this orientation now here, then we can literally, there's two screws already pre-applied there and they line up on the sides there and you can get your cooler installed just like that. But before we're gonna do that, we need to apply thermal paste and the cooler comes with MX6. I'll just do a little alcohol clean of the CPU, making sure that there's nothing in there. Interestingly, Arctic says that you should apply thermal paste like that, that you do an X on your CPU. So let's try how this is gonna work. Remember there's a film underneath, so make sure you do peel that off. Oh, that is nicely polished copper there. And then, I'm gonna line this up in there. Just like that. And use a screwdriver and gently screw it in one side and the other side equally. Then we'll take this peel off here. Before we're going to put the head on there with magnets, there are a few different headers um, in, in the box that come. So as you can see, we can separately control the pump VRM header as well as these fans in here. So there is a fan header kind of plug inside here. So on this side, we can plug in either one of these cables. One of them will just go to CPU and when you put it to CPU header, then that will control all of the pump the VRM and the fans all in one header basically. Or if you want to separate and control all of these things separately, you can actually just do that as well. So we're going to install the more sophisticated cable. We're going to plug this in on the side and then these cables come out from the side just like that. And they're nicely labeled. So there's VRM, fan. So right now I'm going to put the fans all on like CPU headers, right? As well as the VRMs on the CPU headers. So the VRM will act exactly like the CPU fan header and the pump we're gonna put into the AIO header. So the pump's gonna run 100% speed and then the fans are gonna adjust according to the CPU temperature, both VRM and the AIO fans. And then we have an ARGB header, which we'll put just in there like that. So let's turn this PC on. Okay. We've got the 4900K here and we have got the CPU pulling 104 watts maximum right now. Uh, our power limit one is 253, so we can adjust it there. So we're going to put PL1 and PL2 to unlimited and then that maximum time window as well. And let's see how good are the temperatures. Let's do a single run go back here let's have a look okay 336 watts we don't quite like that 100 degrees and thermal throttling right let's put intel's limits there let's put 250 watts on both let's reset this and let's see 250 watts there's 24.2 degrees in here let's try this again look at that 300 watts we just pulled no thermal throttling. All I did was adjust the radiator this way. And I did like maybe one 
eighth of a turn on the actual contact plate on the socket. And now we're pulling 300 watts and we're not thermal throttling. See, none of the cores are thermal throttling. Now, let's open it up to a little bit more. 315. Bear in mind, this is above Intel's limits right now on the 14900K. It'd have to be 253, but because ASUS has multi-core enhancement, so we can see how much we can pull through. Right, let's try this again. Now thermal throttling, but then no. At first, 315 was, and then now we're not. Just for a second we did, but all the cores are trying to go 5.5, 5.4, and our core temperatures are quite okay, 60 something. So we're looking at only the P core temperatures because the E cores are completely fine. And let's try that again. 39,254, 5.5, some of these P cores, 5.4 and 4.4. As you can see, we're not thermal throttling at 315 watts. That's insane. But because this is such a massive radar, radiator and it's got such a large kind of cooling density, there's a lot of heat that this can observe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to 300 watts and let's put on 10 minutes and see if we are thermal throttling. Okay, on the third, we thermal throttle for just a little bit. As you can see, the P cores are not ideal. They're like 5.4 and then somewhere in 5.3 thermal throttles for just a little bit first but then kept keeps going i want to see what the thermal paste application was like and see if we can improve a little bit as you can see the thermal paste application is quite good we're making quite good contact in the middle and then slightly less on the sides seems like 300 watts cooling on there is absolutely no problem did thermal throttle just slightly. Which core is it? Pico 7, yes, at 96 degrees, interestingly. See, we're slightly thermal throttling and then going away. So I'm not sure why this is happening. This is really, really nice, really good though. At 300 watts, that's cooling down the VRMs here as well. I mean, 300 watts is a ridiculous power draw that really no CPU at stock pulls. And can you see how we're not thermal throttling? It boosts like a little bit thermal throttles, but then now it doesn't with all of it going absolutely maximum. What's interesting is that those fans really are quiet because they're 140 millimeters. They don't make as much noise as the 360 millimeter radiator. Usually coolers that close would just make horrendous noise so close. And if I'm feeling the radiator, the radiator is not warm either which means that it's got a lot of heat capacity still left to give out. So one more thing, I wanted to test the actual VRM fan and if that makes any difference or if, if that actually gives anything to the system. And I was very, very surprised. So here's the true test I did. Firstly, when this had been sat overnight and has been completely cold, no heat in it, I took the fan out because you can do that very simply by just unclicking that one and then there's no more fan. Just let this pump run just like that to see the VRM temperatures. And then I'll let this CPU run 253 watts on Cinebench R23 for 30 minutes. And in the end of 30 minutes, we can see what the VRM temperatures are because they're really now pushed to the maximum. They don't usually go that far on usual, you know, system usage because your CPU won't be that utilized and you don't have to push that much power in. But after 30 minutes, I tested it and I can see 80 degrees reported by Hardware Info 64 on software. If I'm taking a picture with the actual thermal camera, I can see that the outside temperature maximum point there was 74 something like that degrees. I turned the PC off and then let it sat for a few minutes. It cooled down a little bit, but when I'm checking the VRMs, I can still feel that they're kind of warmish, so they're not cold like they were before. Then I'm putting the fan back on and then let it do exactly the same thing for the next 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, I checked again the results on software are reporting 64 degrees maximum after 30 minutes, which is 16 degrees lower than without the fan, which is absolutely insane. And the thermal camera outside shows that we have from 74 degrees down to about 61 degrees at the maximum temperature point. So as you can see, we're about 14 to 16 degrees 
lower temperatures just because of this fan on those VRMs, which will actually make the whole system a little bit lower and better temperatures for your CPU in terms of like power delivery and rest of the things. So that fan actually does work and keep your VRMs cool down, which is a very, very nice feature. While doing the test, another thing that I noticed about this 420 millimeter cooler is that this cooler, because it's so massive, like the actual heat mass of this is very, very big because 420 millimeters and the radiator is thick as well. It has a lot of cooling capacity, which means that the radiator doesn't heat up as much and has constantly room to cool the CPU down. In some of the smaller coolers like 360 millimeter, 280 or lower ones, they don't have that much mass, which means that you'll start to have higher fan speeds. Like this is a very, very quiet cooler actually. And I don't have measurements compared to some of the other ones, but when I've been doing the test with some of the 360 millimeter coolers, I can definitely hear and see that this one is very, very much cooler. And this is outside of the case. If I'm putting inside the case, it's going to be even cooler, which is very, very nice. And I've got the pump all the time at 100% speed. You could actually have the pump uh, have a slope as well. So it goes faster when we're getting higher temperatures and so on. So you could get it even quieter which is very, very interesting. Now, there are some more cases coming out with 420 millimeter radiator support. Uh, one from uh, Fractal, uh, which, uh, you know, I can't tell you which one it is, but it's absolutely amazing. So stick around for that one. So to have an absolutely beast of a 420 millimeter cooler, that's awesome. And I think this is the best 420 millimeter cooler out there. In fact, could this be the best cooler just generally out there? I mean, potentially. So the new Arctic Freeze 3 cooler, is it worth getting? I think it's very interesting because of the price point, the six year warranty and what you get with the cooler. If you don't want ARGB, you can go cheaper with just black version, which I would probably get. We don't need ARGB there. A black version is just as good and a little bit cheaper. Now the 360 millimeter, and 280 to 40 millimeter versions are out there as well, if not 120 as well. So whatever size you need, Ar Arctic's got you covered. And I very much like the new pump head a lot more than the previous one. I like we're getting long warranty. I like that we have a 420 millimeter cooler and we're getting a contact frame with it, which actually is between 15 to $20 as well, what you pay for it. So in terms of price to performance, it's absolutely insane. And the actual performance is awesome as well. I mean, who needs more than 250 watts cooling? We got 260 watt and that was completely fine. No problem at all. 270 watts with sometimes thermal throttling, but I'm very impressed with this cooler. I like it a lot. I think there's been an improvement and you get a lot more for your money. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. If you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck, create a PC, then check it out in the video description below. Let me know your thoughts about this Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. By the way, this is not the last cooler that Arctic's going to be releasing very, very soon. I've got another one over there, but I can't talk about it. So stick around for that one because that's uh, very interesting as well. Okay, thanks guys for watching. I'll meet you in the comment section below. Let me know what you think.